There are two ways to visualize the solution to this problem. The first way is to uh, uh, analyze, to isolate the 100 kilograms and to see what are the forces that are acting. On the 100 kilograms, there are the weight, mg, acting, so it will be 100 by 10. So 1,000 newtons, they are going downwards. Because the weight, the 100 kilograms, is not accelerating, the acceleration is zero, it's in equilibrium, so there must be a force of the same magnitude going upward. That is the tension. So the equation that you will place is that the tension plus the weight equals zero. The tension, we call it T1 minus 1,000 newtons equals zero, so the tension is 1,000 newtons. Okay, so we found this tension T1 here, this tension T1 here, that is 1,000 newtons. Let's go to do the same thing with a box that includes two bodies. So let's go to erase here, I erase here, and now I use this box. So remember, T1 is 1,000 newtons, that is the force that is here, here. Okay, now I will do like this, and I will say, okay, on these systems, there are two particles, 10 kilograms and 100 kilograms, there are one ten by one ten by ten going downwards. There are one hundred kilograms by ten. The weight of the of the object going up downwards. So there must be a force going upward that make an equilibrium, and it should be the same amount of the sum going downwards. Here I have one thousand newtons. Here I have one hundred newtons. So the tension will have to be 1,100 newtons. Perfect. Now, let's go to analyze. So if I'm, so the tension here was 1,000 newtons. Now the tension is 1,100 newtons. Let's go to analyze here what is the tension. To do this, let's go to erase, and let's go to consider now the system made by these two, by this box that contain all the boxes. So here there will be a force going upward and the force going downward is 100 by 10, 1,000 newtons. There is another force going downwards that is 10 by 10, M by G. And there is another force going downwards that is 20 by 10, that is 200. So I have 200 going downwards, 100 going downwards, and 1,000 newtons going downwards. So the total force going downwards is 1,300 newtons. So there must be a tension here of 1,300 newtons going upward that makes the equilibrium. So in this way, I can solve the problem. The other way to solve it is more detailed. It takes into account, it makes exactly the same thing that I have done, but it takes into account uh, the rope. So this is 100 kilos. So the solution to this uh, problem is that as I'm going upward, the tension here, the tension of this rope, it will be the highest one. The tension on this rope here, it would be 1,300, it would be the highest one. So the tension in A, it would be the biggest one. I think this is the solution, okay, that he's looking. So the other way to do the problem is to analyze uh, forces uh, acting on each body. This is 100 kilograms, there is a tension going up. What is this tension? Is the force that the rope is doing on the mass. So there is a force that the mass is doing on the rope that is going downwards. So let's go to finalize here on this body. It will be a tension going up, T1, 1,000 newtons going downwards. So the tension will be T1, 1,000 newtons. On the rope will be 1,000 newtons going up. So it should be 1,000 newtons going upward 
because the mass is zero and the acceleration is zero. So T2, if T2 minus 1,000, applying it to slow to the rope, it will say T2 minus 1,000, T2 going upward, minus 1,000 going downward is the mass, by the acceleration this is zero, so T2 is 1,000. So T2, 1,000, is the force that the body of 20 kilograms is doing on the rope. So there must be a force that the mass of 20 kilograms is doing on the, there is a force or that the rope is doing on the mass of 10 kilograms. So T2 is going downwards now. So if you apply T3 minus mg minus T2, you will find that T3 is 1,100 newtons. Um, again, T3, this T3 is the force that the rope is doing on the 10 kilogram. So on the rope, they must be by the principle of action and reaction, a force T3 going downwards. This is T3, and on the rope, there must be another force T4 going Upwards, T4 is the force that the body uh, of uh, 20 kilograms is doing on this uh, rope. Uh, so on the, on the body, there is another force that is the force T4 going downwards. T4, this is T4. So here I analyze T4 minus T3, well, the mass by the acceleration, so T4 equal to T3, so T4 is 1,100 newtons. So if I go now to isolate the body of 20 kilograms, I will isolate in the following way. There is the force of the weight going downwards, that is 20 by 10, or 200 newtons. There is the force T4 going downwards, that is the force that the rope is doing on the 20 kilograms, that is 1,100 newtons, and I want to find T5. So the sum of all the forces is zero because the acceleration is zero, so T5 minus 1,100 minus 200 is zero, so T5 is 1,300 newtons. Okay, and the problem is solved. Uh, in doing it the best in the first, as I did it in the first way, is easier, but here is more detailed. Okay, summary. summary. Okay, uh, let's go to analyze this problem. Please read it carefully and come back. What it says here, you have two bodies. Mass A is a thick mass. Mass B is a smaller mass, so mass A is bigger than mass a B. There is 100 newtons pulling the force A, uh, the mass A. Um, um, it say it say like this, which one is correct? Box A push on box B with a force of 100 newtons. So what it says is that if you apply this force of 100 newtons, this force of 100 newtons will be applied to the body V. Is that correct or not correct? Is not correct. Why? Because the body V is accelerating with the same acceleration of the body A. They will accelerate equally. So the body V is through the body V there is a force acting on this. The acceleration will be this amount. If you make the calculation, if you take the system made by the two particles, and you apply Newton's law, the sum of all the forces would be equal to the mass by the acceleration. The sum of all the forces is the 100 Newtons applied to the two masses. So the mass will be the two masses by dA, so the acceleration will be 100 divided by ma plus mb. This is the acceleration of uh, the object A and object of the object B. So I have the object B here, it's having an acceleration A, so the force that he's having, the force acting on V, is not 100 newtons. It's the mass of the V by the acceleration. And what is the force of V? What is the mass of V? MV. And what is the acceleration? Is this amount. 100 divided by MA plus MV. Okay, what is the force on V? So the force on V will be, the force on V will be, let me, uh, the force on V will be taking in account that MA is bigger than MB.
please read this problem, try to solve it, and come back. Well, this problem say that there is an SUV that is uh, stuck in the mud, and they apply three forces. So I apply three forces, force one, F1, F2, and F3. So it will ask you, find the X and the Y component of the three pools. So this is an algebraical problem uh, using vectors. Uh, so we have to sum the three vectors. Um, we have to sum in the X direction what it's in the X direction and we have to sum what is in the y direction. What is in the x direction? In the x direction, I see this force, this force. And what is the magnitude of this force? It's 90, 85, cosine of 31. Hmm. What other forces I see in the x direction? I see this one, this one, this component. So this one is 411, 411, Cosine of 53, cosine of 53. But it's going to the negative direction. So I have seen the 985 cosine of 31 going to the right positive direction, minus 4111 cosine of 53 going to the left. And now I see the 788, but be careful, uh, the angle, is this angle 32 is is the, is this one, so the angle that is here is 90 by minus 32, 90 minus 58, so if you want to do it by cosine, you should put here cosine of 58 instead of sine of 32. Mm. So this is the result. The result is that on the x direction there is a force, the sum of all the forces is 90, 88, 85, cosine 31, minus 411, cosine of 53, minus 78.8 sine of 32, or if you prefer, minus 78.8 cosine of 58 is the same, is the force that exists in the x direction. If you do it for the y direction, you will find this force, 90.85, is of cosine sine of 31, and it will be this part, it will be this part, Part, it will be 90, 85, sine 31. Okay, and in the y direction, I see this force going up. That is, uh, that is 788. Wow, positive, sorry. Mm, uh, 788, cosine 32, perfect. I might see going downwards this force, this force, the 411 have a force going downwards because the 411 is the sum of these two forces, of these two forces. This one, oh, this one is negative, that's why. And this one is 411, 411, going downwards, a multiply by this angle, this angle, cosine of this angle, I can multiply, minus 411, cosine of 53 minus 90 is 90, 47, 40, uh, 37, 37, or oh, minus 411 sine of 53 is okay. So I have two forces, and let's say that this is 10, and let's say that this is um, minus 5. So what is the force? The force is fx i plus fy j. So the force is 10 i minus 5 j. But you have to make the calculation, of course. Um, use the component to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the three poles. And the direction, the magnitude will be a square root of 10 squared plus 5 squared. And the direction, you make it the picture, you draw the, the force, it will be 10 plus minus 5. 
But I don't think this is the solution. Eh? Yeah, minus 5. 10 minus 5. Mm. Make the calculation, please, and let me know what is this uh, forces acting on the body. So be careful about the angles. The angles work like this. If you have this force of, uh, let's say, 90 I8, and you use this angle, you can project through this x through this axis multiplied by the cosine of the angle 31. So this would be 9088 cosine of 31. But if if is if in instead of giving you this angle, I give you this angle, this angle, the angle uh, 31 minus 90 is 59, no? 59, yes, 59, maybe I made a mistake. Here, well, 59, 59. If I give you this angle, and this is 988, this is also here, 988 sine of 59. It's the same calculation, okay? Have to be careful because the cosine of the angle, you see the triangle, this is 988. If you see the triangle here, the cosine is the adjacent. If you see the triangle here, the sine is this side. This side is the sine, is the opposite to this angle. So be careful about this. Okay, next problem, say a 68.5 kilogram skater moving initially with velocity 2.4 meters per second, so he's moving with 2.4 meters per second on a rough horizontal eye, so there is friction, and comes to red in 3.5 seconds. So T1 equals zero, T2 equal 3.5 seconds, uh, 3.52 due to friction. What is the force does friction exert on the on the object? So initially the initial velocity is v vi vi, vi 2.4 meters per second, and this initial velocity of 2.4 meters per second is going to decrease, and it's going to be converted in velocity zero. So there is acceleration. Uh, making a change in the velocity and the acceleration is if he's moving with this velocity the change in velocity is in this direction in this direction it must be the change in the velocity so this change in velocity makes that the initial velocity plus the change will be zero so force equal mass by acceleration. Mass is the change in velocity per unit of time. The force that is acting is the mass, 68.5, by the change in the velocity. The change in the velocity is V final minus V initial. V final is zero. V initial is 2.4. V final minus V initial is minus 2.4. Divide by the time delta T. The time delta T is 3.52 seconds. So the force will be the force that it is attributed to the friction force, the friction force that is acting on the body, will be, this force will produce a zero velocity, it will, it will disaccelerate the body uh, and will create this acceleration, this is the acceleration, the change in velocity per unit of time, and if you make the calculations, you will find the value of the friction force. It will be negative going to the left. If you are moving to the right, if the velocity is going to the right, the force will be to the left. And this is the magnitude in newtons of the force. You may calculate approximately minus 60.8 by 2. It will be 150, let's say, divided by 350. Minus, so the force would be, I don't know, you calculate uh, like 40 newtons, maybe, uh, something like this. You, you make the right calculation, okay. So the force is going to 40 newtons. What it say this problem? It say that if you have a body 
of mass m equal 67, 68.5. And the body is moving with velocity v 2.4. I think it was 2.4, yes, 2.4 meters per second. What it say? If you apply a force F of 40 newtons going to the left, you would produce that the body of mass M, 68.5 kilogram, will have a velocity V equal zero after the time delta T has changed in 3.52 seconds. So this force, the 40 newtons, the friction force in this case, it producing a change in the velocity. Initially, the velocity was like this. And later on, the velocity decrease, 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 and finally it becomes zero. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, read the following problem. It say, what is the mass of a book that weights 3.2 newtons? Okay, the weight is the mass by the acceleration that the Earth is, is uh, attracting the body. So if the force is 3.2 newtons, so the mass will be 3.2 newtons, so mg is 3.20 newtons, so the mass will be 3.20 divided by g. If you are in the Earth, the mass will be 3.20 newton, the force that the Earth is attracting, divided by the acceleration g, 9.8. So it will be the mass will be divided by 10, it will be 0.32 kilograms. This will be the mass. And the second question in the same lab, what is the weight of a dog whose mass is 14 kilograms? So the, for where the force um, is the mass by the gravitational acceleration, so it will be 14 by 10, it will be 140 newtons. Ah, it's the same, okay. Okay, read this problem and try to solve it. It says like this, you have a book on your hand, and there are forces on the book, of course, this is the book. There is the force that the uh, Earth is attracting the book, that is mg, and there is the force that your palm is doing on the book, that is the normal force. And these forces are in equilibrium if you don't increase the n, if you increase the end, the force that your palm is doing, you would produce acceleration if you increase the end in this direction. But if you don't, if you stay just holding the book, the acceleration will be zero. So that would mean that the weight of the book and the normal will be the same. One going downwards and the other one going upwards. So it say, it say yeah, the downward force the uh, downward force of magnitude for Newton is exerted on the book by the Earth, of course. An um, upward force of magnitude for Newton is exerted on the book by the hand. Yes, this is the result. For Newton's going up, down. For Newton's going up to hold the body, to hold the book by the hand. Is the upward force in part B, the reaction to the downward force in part A? No. The reaction of Mg, the force that the Earth is doing on the book, is on the Earth. The Earth is suffering a force Mg, the mass of the book, by the gravitational of the book going upward. This is the reaction. So these forces are not action and reaction. And the force that the, uh, your, palm, your palm is doing on the book, the book is doing on your palm the same force going downward. So you apply the N, and the N is going downwards, and two, let's say, going downwards on your palm. So these are not the action and reaction. The, uh, the reaction force in part A is a f the reaction 
to the force in part A, in part A, what is the force in part A? Uh, for uh, or the reaction is, uh, is the, 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 the force that is acting on the Earth. The reaction of the force in part A is, is a force of magnitude for Newtons, for Newtons, exactly on the Earth by the book. Mm. Its direction is opposite, opposite, so going upwards, upwards. The reaction of the force in part B, part B uh, for, for, uh, for Newton is uh, the, the reaction that your palm is doing uh, on the book is a force of magnitude for Newtons also, exactly on your palm by the book, its direction is um, downwards, but it's on your palm. The forces per I and B are equal and opposite because of new, the forces in part I and B are equal because of Newton's, uh, what is? The forces in part A and B for Newton's and the normal force, the weight and the normal, force are equal and opposite because of Newton's second law, second law. The forces in part B and E are equal and opposite because Newton's third law, third law, must be third law. Okay. Okay, sometimes it's, have to be careful to read what you, what they say. Okay. Okay, let's go to analyze this problem. It say a pole is hanging from a long string that is tied to the ceiling. Read it carefully and come back. It say an observer inside the train can see the ball hang motionless. Okay. Draw a clearly labeled free body diagram for the ball. If a the train has uniform velocity, okay. If the train have uniform velocity, the velocity is constant. I don't like that he put an observer inside the train because this observer is not an inertial observer. Okay. So now we say like this. Okay. This is the train. The train is moving with velocity constant. The ceiling of the train is moving with velocity constant. And the object of mass m that is hanging is moving with velocity constant. So the change in the velocity is zero, so the acceleration in the is zero. So the sum of all the forces has to be zero. How I will imagine this object hanging from the ceiling with a total force zero? Well, the sum of all the forces is zero means that the tension has to be equal to the weight. The tension positive going upward has to be equal to the weight, so the tension in this case, T minus mg equals zero, so T is equal mg. So, the problem is now solved, and the diagrams, the free diagrams on the body of mass m is this one. There are only two forces acting, and the sum of the, the two forces are zero. Perfect. Now, it comes to the problem when the train is accelerating. When the train is accelerating, I need to move the observer. The observer have to be outside the train. Otherwise, Newton's law will fail. So the observer see the mass m accelerating, accelerating with the acceleration of the train. So this is the mass m accelerating with the train. And the observer see these things. See that the sum of all the forces are not zero, are m by a. m by a, a in the direction of the acceleration of the train. This is the sum of all the forces. So you have the mass here. How I will create a situation when the sum of all the forces will be m by a? m by a. Here is m by a. Oh, so I have a body with total uh, forces, m by a goes in this direction. The train is accelerating to the right. Okay, so now the sum of all the forces are not zero. The sum of all the forces are ma. 
how I will construct the sum of something of two forces that are acting. So one force must be the tension acting like this. This is the tension T. And the other force must be the weight going downwards, mg. And the sum of these two forces, the tension and the mg, the sum of two, the two forces have to produce mass by acceleration. Have to produce this. So the sum, T, mg, plus T, mg plus T equal ma, mg vector plus T vectors. So this one going downwards, plus this one going the tension, T have to be M by A. Mm. So now the situation changed. Now the free body diagram is like this. The free body diagram is the MG going downwards, the tension going in this direction, so there is an angle here, uh, an inclination of the mass M, uh, of the mass M uh, that is hanging from the ceiling. So, so there is the tension, T, if I consider this angle alpha, this would be T sine of alpha. Uh, T sine of alpha, okay. So T sine of alpha must be the force, the total force. So T sine of alpha must be the mass by the acceleration. Um, on the vertical uh, direction, uh, the free diagram will say that T, that this force, let's go to put it another color, this force, this force minus mg will be zero because it's standing up. It's not accelerating upward. And this force is T cosine of alpha. So T cosine of alpha will be the second equation minus mg equals zero. And the first equation will say this one, that T, uh, T sine of alpha equal m by the acceleration of the train. So these are the two equations. This is the analysis. It's not an easy analysis. I have many details. One of the details is that the observer who applied it to slow must be outside of the train when the train is accelerating. OK, read this question and solve it. Make a free diagrams of, the, of each body. So I have the 50 kilograms. Of course, I have the weight mg, 50 by 10, going downwards, so 500 newtons will go upward, downwards. Of course, that the, the floor is making a force upwards, and it's making a normal force that of, of 500 newtons always, also going upwards. So there is 500 newtons going downwards, that is the way there is 500 newtons going upwards that is uh, the normal force. There is the force of this guy, F, that it doesn't say how much is, F, whatever. And there is the force that the body of 85 kilograms of pounds is doing on the object. And this is the force that the weight is doing. Now, this is the free diagram for the body or the force of uh, 80 of acting on the 50 due to the 85. This is the force. Now we'll go to the 85 kilogram. To the 85 kilogram, what are the forces acting? Well, the weight, 850, 85 mass by acceleration, the normal, on the same amount because it's not flying out, it's not flying upwards, so it will be also 850 newtons for the, for the normal. So mg, let's go to put it in, in, this is 85. 85 by g going downwards. And n equal 85 by g going upwards. And there is the force that the object of 50 kilograms, 50 pounds, is doing on the 85. So this is the force acting on the 85 acting on due to the 50 kilograms. 
and is going to the right. So it would produce acceleration to the right. Well, this is the free diagram. Okay, now the same problem is uh, two bodies, one 750 newtons, the other one 850 newtons. So we isolate the body and we apply, we fight the forces acting on each body. On the 750 uh, kilograms, so 750 newtons, so this is the weight, should be, so it's a mass of 70, 75 kilograms. I don't know why I say it like this. Or uh, make a free This 750 newtons should be the weight. So the mass is 70, 75 kilograms. On this body, there is a force acting to the right. There is a weight that is 750 newtons going downwards. There is the normal. There is the tension going to the left. Is the force that the rope is doing on the body. And there is a friction force. So this is the diagram. It contains on the body of 75 kilograms contains one force, applied force by the man, the normal force applied by the, by the floor, the weight applied by the earth, the friction force applied by the force, and the tension of the rope applied by the rope. Now let's go to move to the 850 Newton's body. So the 850 I interpret that is the the mass is 85 kilograms, so the body is 85 kilograms, 85 kilograms. What are the forces acting? The rope is acting in this direction with the same force that this one. It's the same force if the rope has no mass. There is the normal force acting up. There is the weight, 850 newtons going downwards and there is the friction force. 